Good morning. I'm Rev. Rosemary Dawson, Interim Minister of the Athol Congregational Church. Welcome to Worship Online. I have a few announcements for you this morning. I want to remind you that if you would like to make a prayer request for this online service, you may go to our website, our Facebook page, or call the office with your joy or concern. Our next takeout community meal will be June 5th. We will be serving kebabs, seasoned rice, peas, and peach cobbler. And please call the office by June 2nd to make a reservation. It has been suggested to me that we have an online Bible study for the next six weeks or so. If any of you are interested in participating, please call or email me. Also, our church leadership is beginning the process of considering when and how we might reopen the church. We are in the early stages of this process and we are gathering information and guidance from state and local authorities, our denominational leadership, and others who have important guidelines for us to consider. The planning, doing, and reopening is a complicated task with many issues needing to be resolved. We thank you for your patience and your understanding. Today is our annual Children's Sunday. I want to say thank you to all those who have worked with our children on, in Sunday school this year. Your care and work and love are a true blessing to the young people and to us older folks too. And I want to thank all the young folks who have so gladly added their voices to our Sunday video worship. And we will begin our service with a special public service announcement that Harper has created for us. So let us enter into worship together. The peace of Christ be with you all. We can make it through us, but we just have to work together. You and me can make it through, no matter what. We can still make it through, but we just have to work together. And don't forget, we miss you too. If we just work together, we will get through this. We have to, we know we can, but we just have to work together. Together we can make it through, but we just have to work. All to worship. Our united response today will be with thanksgiving in our hearts. We draw near to God. God has called us by name and made us his own. Come now to offer our, your prayers and praise. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we draw near to God. God is faithful, loving, and true. God will accomplish his purposes for us. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we draw near to God. Enter this time to learn of God's mercy and power. Offer ourselves for the discipleship and service. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we draw near to God. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Ever-present God, we are awed and humbled by the by your knowledge of us. And so we come today so we may know you more fully. We want to live as your beloved children and as your covenant partners. Assure us in these moments that you hear our prayers, even as we listen for your words of truth for us. Fill our hearts and our minds with your sure hope so that we may respond to your call and live according to the way of Christ. May our encounter with you, with you lead us to inspired worship and faithful service so that all the world may know your goodness and grace. We ask this in the, in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss Caprice. I usually stand up in front of church at Children's Day to present the top attendance winners and thank all the people that make our program work. This year, it's virtual, and I'm on my porch. How bizarre. So let's get started. The top attendance winner for Sunday school is Harper Johnson. Woohoo! This year, we decided to do the top winner for nursery, since we've got so many littles in the nursery now. And the top nursery winner is Orion Susie. Congratulations. This year's top attendance winner for youth group is Adelia Santanaro. Good job, everybody. Thanks to all the families and parents who bring their children and grandchildren to our program. We can't do this program without the kids, obviously. I'm grateful to be able to watch all those kids grow up and keep up the good work to be the best incredible you you can be. God's light shines in you and soon we'll be able to see it in person. Next, I'd like to thank the teachers and nursery staff. The program would not work without you. We've tried it. It doesn't work. Top on my list is Jan Duty. She's a teacher, nursery volunteer, and our gathering room co-leader, and most of all, our mentor for many, many years. Joe Bazzaio, Jr., he's our teacher for youth and gathering room co-leader, and also my birthday buddy, a couple years apart. Allie B is my right-hand lady. She runs errands. She helps collect the offerings. She's amazing. Amanda and Tyler Batchley, Brittany and Danielle Bushy, Mindy Elwood, Chris Govin, Jennifer Harrington, Bonnie Hodgson, Melinda Jack. Special shout out to Tracy Johnson, who's our nursery coordinator, also known as Feral Cat Wrestler. Then we have Darlene Kilhart, Jessica Matthews, Megan Nelson, Elizabeth and Justin Susi. Jenna Sujak, Joanne Tresbeck, and Julie Young. Thank you also to Karen Hager and Bonnie Benjamin for your support through special events throughout the year. I'm in awe of all your many talents. Thanks to all of you who signed up or jumped in as needed. Many hands make light work, as the saying goes. You are a blessing to our church family and all the lives you touch. God bless you all. In closing, I'd like to offer a short prayer. Dear God, Thank you for blessing us with so much goodness. It's easy to be thankful when things are going great. Help us to keep the faith during our times apart and to rejoice our times together. We will be together again once this test of faith is over. In your name, amen. Thank you, everybody. I know it's been a trial. We will get through it. Amen. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, 
you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take my wings of, of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not so dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise for you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are, you, are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. Woven me in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed of me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How, va how vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O oh God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up, up against you for evil, do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord? And do I not loathe these who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies search me O god and know that my and know my heart test me and know my thoughts see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting thank you this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All up in my house, I'm gonna let it shine. All up in my house, I'm gonna let it shine. All up in my house, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I want to start today by asking you a few questions. How many people know you? A handful? A few dozen? A hundred? Maybe, but it does depend on what I mean by know you. Do folks know only your name? Or do they know you like family or something more? My mom always used to say to me, I know you better than you know yourself. And I have always doubted that. So who knows you, really? How long have they known you? Who knows what makes you tick and what your deepest longings are? I recently had the privilege of going to a former parishioner's funeral. Our friendship blossomed in the first few days of my interim work at her church and we have known each other for over 20 years. I knew her well, she knew me well. And yet, Eve was the kind of person who collected friends like gems. There were folks there who knew Eve for 30, 40, 50 years and more. She was married to John for 73 years. To say they knew each other would be an understatement. Their marriage, their love, was and is 
incredible. Who knows you like that? Psalm 139 boldly announces, God knows you. God knows you better than John and Eve know each other. God knows me more than my dad or my mom. God knows me better than I know myself. And that's the only time that statement is true. Compounding phrase after phrase, the psalmist declares, you have searched me and known me. Sitting, standing, walking, laying down. God knows you. Your thoughts, your words, your ways, your motives and actions. God is intimately aware of you. And with such insight, the psalmist declares, such knowledge is too high, too deep for me to grasp. Now when you realize that God knows you fully and intimately, well, it's incredible, isn't it? Such inescapable knowledge leads the psalmist to another profound reality. God not only knows you, God is with you, always and everywhere. The psalmist asks, where could I go where God's spirit is not present? Is there any place where I would be out of God's sight? And the answer is, no place, not ever. Heaven or hell, the far reaches of space, the depths of the sea, east, west, north, and south, God is there with you. Even in the darkness of night, or the darkness of sorrow and trouble, God is still there with you. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 8, I have become absolutely convinced that neither death nor life, nor think, neither angels nor rulers, neither things present or things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. God is with us, wherever we are, however we are, in any and all situations. God is by your side, for good. God is there to guide you and help you and keep you. And that too is incredible, isn't it? With God's intimate knowledge of you and God's unshakable presence with you, there's one more truth that the psalmist declares. God has plans for you. God made you. Incredible you. God formed you, created you from toenail to hair follicle. And God doesn't stop. God isn't content to just create such a wonder and then let it slide. No, God formed you for a purpose. Your days have been written out before your days began. And yes, God made you as artist or architect, doctor or chef, teacher or tinkerer. The skills and passions that shape your life and your choices have been shaped by God. But that is not the purpose of your days. The grand purpose of this grand God is, well, grand. You have been formed before creation started to live for the glory of God, as Paul said. You reveal God's glory. You, just by being you, are a living sign of the wondrous, awesome, incomprehensible God. Isn't that incredible? That truth, that gift is awesome. And it is a challenge. It's a challenge to accept it and to live into it. So let that percolate through your mind and your heart and your soul. Know that God knows you better than you know yourself. Know that God is with you always, wherever you are, whatever the situation. Know that God has a glorious purpose for you in the details of your life and on a cosmic scale. And with these truths, beneath them and above them, through them and beyond them, is one everlasting truth that holds them all. God loves you. Now, isn't that incredible? Amen.
where? O oh God, we are truly awed that you know us so fully and love us so deeply. Your presence with us is unshakable and your care for us is inexhaustible. With confidence in your compassion and wisdom, we come now before you with our joys and our concerns. We pray for your church and for this congregation. May we as a community grow in the knowledge of you and in our relationship to you. May we grow in knowledge and love for each other and may we grow in our relationship with all peoples so that the goodness of your reign may become known in all the world. And we pray for our world. May our leaders be given the wisdom and compassion they need in these days so that all people may gain the blessings of life. We pray for all who, are, who seek your help today. Grant your healing to the sick, your comfort to the mourning, and your aid to the needy. We especially pray for all who are dealing with the coronavirus. May all medical people and the myriad of other workers find the strength, support, and courage they need as they continue their work. May the ill and those who love them know your healing grace, and may those who are mourning know your comforting presence. We pray also for those dealing with all the other difficulties from this pandemic. May they know your faithful provision and your sustaining presence, presence in the midst of the, their challenges. We also remember Larry and the family of Jean Drury and all our friends and members who are seeking your grace and aid as we come before you now in the quiet of our hearts. We thank you, faithful God, for all your goodness to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has given us the precious gift of life and created us for God's joy. God has formed us and called us for his glory, that we might live in ways that share God's rich blessings with others. Through our offerings, we give support to our ultimate goal. Let us give with joy. We would prefer that you send your offerings by check to the church office, but it's also possible to, for you to give through PayPal or through your bank's bill pay service, and you may go to our website for more information. Let's now join together in our offertory prayer. Thank you, God, for the incredible gifts that you have given to us. We are grateful that you know us and are with us, that you have a good purpose for us and that you love us beyond comprehension. We these, give these gifts to honor you and to share this good news with those who have not yet discovered what a wonder they are. May we all grow in faith, hope, and love so that together we may walk in the ways of your everlasting life. Amen. Go now into the world, being certain of this, that God, who began a good work in you, will keep on working with you until it comes to a glorious finish on the day of Jesus Christ. Go now in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen.